Hello there everybody, my name is Luke from the Voyagers here again today with Sonic Academy with another cool tip for you on, well this time it's on workflow and it's very very important to me because if you can really work quick in your program it's way easier to translate what's inside your head into the program you're using. So I'm gonna show you a couple of really cool tricks and then I'll show you where to find them and how to program them into your logic because they're not standard, okay? So the first one, uh, if you're like me and you're not using a sampler for your drums and you're mainly using just drag and drop samples into the sequencer window like so, it gets very, um, well, messy when you zoom out and your track gets bigger and bigger and it's really hard to differentiate every single sample. So let's see here, no, I think we can zoom out now. So it's starting to get a little bit more difficult when I zoom out more. They, they, they kind of melt together or something. It's confusing because maybe I want to do like a little cut here and it's, it's just difficult. So I don't like to use it like that. So what I do is I select these and press my shortcut for this one and, and I'll show you how to program it in uh, in a minute. Is Command Shift F and it'll create a block like this. And it is um, really useful in multiple ways because you can just make a loop from this. So you can just repeat these sections. And if you double click in it, you can just easily just take stuff away or, or, or place it somewhere else. Or you can just easily make a quick cut uh, or just mute this section here. So it makes your life a lot easier. So now, as you can see, I've got a couple of cuts here. And here comes my next shortcut, which is merge, which is my equals sign. And now it's just one again. So the other way this is really uh, useful is, for example, this clap I have right here. It is a bit offset, so the actual clap is here, but the sample starts here. So if I want to drag and drop this sample to another position, it's going to be a little, little bit fiddly to get it in the right spot, okay? So the way I do it, I just create this little loop this little folder I mean, with a command shift F shortcut, make a loop out of it, make it normal, and then join them together. And that's a really, really quick way for me to create a loop like that. And it also works on multiple tracks at the same time. So for example, these two hi-hats here, these can be merged into one folder. There we go. Really easy, really fast. So the other thing I just did is another shortcut I'm using. So for example, let's say uh, you're working on a track and you want to hear this region right away. I just press V and it automatically makes a loop and starts playing. So when I click just these four and press V and it's taking this part as well because it doesn't overlap here. So if I take that out, Just like this and V. So you don't have to fiddle around with creating your own loops here on the, on the on the top and accidentally create markers or whatnot. It's really annoying. I don't have that stuff anymore. So that's a really cool technique as well. Um, and then we go into the piano roll here. So I got this melody set up here, and let's put it on solo. If I want to have these notes be attached to each other, so for example, I want them to be like like this, but now I gotta select these notes again, and then take them back there, and now because I'm playing everything on my keyboard, the note lengths aren't exactly the same, so I gotta do this wiggly motion and get them on the same level, right, like that. So it takes a lot of work. So I got a shortcut for that. Select everything and press Command L. Some notes appear like chords. Shorten, yeah. And there we go. So this is called legato. And it also works if you have, for example, um, just a couple of random notes. Legato, there we go. They're all attached. And the cool thing is that this technique leaves up like a really small amount of space here. And that makes sure that you don't have overlapping notes, so you don't get the um, the gliding notes if you're using like a like a um, a glide function or portamento. It won't get activated. If you want the portamento activated, just drag it on a little bit more, and that's it. It's a real time saver. So the final thing I have 
and it's a really cool function as well. Let me drag this back to Legato mode. Uh, if you go up to your uh, transport bar and you right click, you can customize it. And there's a lot of stuff you can activate or deactivate. And I would highly suggest just deactivating everything you don't use because uh, it just takes away a lot of space and it's, it seems to be a little crowded up here. And I like it to be a little, a little bit more clean. Um, one of the things that's, that always is um, not selected, um, actually it's two things. The first one is called capture recording. And then the second one, you want to go into custom here. It's usually on beats and project. You want to place it on custom. And then you want to check the very speed. Okay. I'll show them both right now. So the first one is capture record, which is this button right here. What this does is it is going to record you, what you're doing all the time, even though you're not pressing record. So that's really useful, right? So for example, if I'm playing along with this uh, loop here, which is horrible, but let's say it was amazing, but you can't remember what you just played. You just press this button right here and there you go. That's exactly what I played. And I can just merge these two again and there we go. Did I delete it now? Yeah, okay, perfect. So that's capture record. It's very, very useful. The other thing is very speed. And what very speed does, it adds this button right here, the, the plus minus button, and this little section here. So what this does is you can speed up or slow down your track uh, without changing the main tempo. Because this is the main tempo. But let's say you, you I click on speed only and I can change the speed and pitch of the track. Now you can set up the percentage, but if you don't want to use the percentage, you can just click on the percentage button and you can change it, for example, into resulting tempo. So um, let's place it on 140 BPM. My track will get sped up and pitched up as well. So let's go down now, like 110 BPM. It's a really cool technique I've been using in a lot of records where I produce it on a lower BPM than what I'm rendering at. So for example, the, the track that I've been doing in the last couple of videos on the, on the tutorial videos, uh, I've been producing that one on 150 BPM, but I'm actually going to render it out at around 165. So those are all my shortcuts and little techniques to help the workflow. So uh, in order to find them, you need to go into your Logic Pro X, go to preferences and go into the um, no key commands, I'm sorry, and edit. Now, the first one I did was the folder. So let's press folder and you can find pack folder here. You can learn by key label and you can create your own shortcut. Mine is command shift F. So the next one I did was the merge. Or no, join, I think it is. Yeah, join region and notes key label is equals. And then I had the legato. Trim note end to following notes force legato command L. Yep. And I believe those were all my shortcuts that are not standard in Logic Pro. So really try to work that out. If you, if you notice that you're using a couple of, of uh, uh, functions in Logic a lot in your projects, simply go into this menu and search for that specific function. Like for example, scissor, set scissor tool, and then you can easily create a, create a shortcut, for example. All right, the final shortcut that I was using, um, it created the cycle or loop like so, just select. Um, that's called cycle. And what you're looking for here is set round locators and cycle play. And my shortcut for that one is V. Now you might find that some of my shortcuts are already being used in logic by a different function. And if that's the case, just check it out what that function is and if you're actually using it. And if you're not using it, don't worry about it. If you don't use it, you're not gonna miss it. So just don't be afraid to change stuff up. And if you really mess up, you can always revert back to the default setting of logic. So no worries. So try that in your own tracks and it really helps your workflow and your creativity if you're really fast with the program you're working with. So try it out and good luck and I'll see you in the next video. 
thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.